Welcome back to Business. Um, we are live on all our social media platforms. That is at Metropole TVKE across all those platforms that you're actually signed into. So now, our review is pretty much going to focus on exactly what the COVID-19 pandemic is doing to the economy so far. Now, as we do know, this has really now turned into a global concern. We can only trace the effects in the country as of 13th March 2020, but what we do know now is that it's gone worldwide. Now, the country is taking a raft of measures, but I want us to start from the announcement that was made yesterday by the health by the health CS Mutahi Kawe, so that we do know what numbers that we're talking about this morning and who is in these numbers as well. As the government, through the Ministry of Health, continues to put up measures and mitigations to reduce the spread of the deadly COVID-19 virus in the country, the number of those infected continues to rise. Today, the Health Cabinet Secretary, Mutahi Kagwe, reported an additional nine cases, bringing the total number in the country to 25. CS Mutahi reported that the nine new cases who have already been isolated were found to be positive from 82 samples of suspected cases that were tested by doctors. The total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in to 25. The CS father said that the government has identified four counties, including Nairobi, Mombasa, Kwale and Kilifi, as the high-risk counties in Kenya. He added that 98 of the 745 people who are being monitored for coming in close contact with the infected people have been discharged after the 14 days of the quarantine period. These confirmed cases are spread out in four counties, namely Nairobi, Mombasa, Lefe, and Kwale. The total number of close contacts that we have so far been monitoring stands at 745. Out of the number, 98 of them have been discharged after completing the 40-day follow-up period. Kagwe added that the high number of travelers at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport and other entry points has been a challenge to the government that has embarked on a mandatory quarantine for all international passengers. There has been challenges, particularly the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, as well as the designated hotels and government facilities. Today, the country received 25,000 testing kits for the coronavirus from Chinese business mogul Jack Ma. Health Cabinet Secretary Mutahi Kagwe says mandatory testing will be carried out on all contact cases as the fight against COVID-19 intensifies. Now you actually do see that now these cases which actually did start in Nairobi are spreading which means that it's not only Nairobi now which is being treated as the center of the COVID-19 cases because as we do know of yesterday we did have 25 confirmed cases in the country and four counties are already in the locked in the numbers as well. So now the next conversation that we're talking about this morning therefore is who is actually getting these cases moving. It's getting confirmed from the health CS that it's actually you and I. That's why social distancing is where the big focus has been throughout his entire communication. Now, we do have restaurants, number one, I've already been told that the only thing you can actually do is go on a takeaway models. Now, we've seen a lot of communications there from, from hotels in the country and a spot check in Nairobi County itself shows that most hotels, despite being open, are not conducting their business as normal. Now, that is the big effect, therefore, that we're talking about in the economy. Another area, therefore, that we're talking about is the transport sector, which everybody does know it is responsible for the transportation of over 2 million Nairobians or Kenyans, per se, into the cities as they go to their places of work. Now, why is this communication important? Because 
Mutahi Kawa says that all the employers, those who can afford to make the employees work from home, they should adopt that model right now. And we do know that the public transport sector is one of those areas in which social distancing was going to be a problem. But what it's doing now, as we do know of it, is that it's having a ripple effect on the businesses of the people who actually get into the CBD. Now, the public sector, transport in that order, is calling on the government to put in place a raft of measures that are going to cushion them from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, why is this important this morning? Because now we're talking about fuel prices being retained at the same level. We are talking about distancing and the number of matatus that have been allowed on the road from each circle still being retained, which pretty much means that the supply in that case is going to be lesser than the demand. The demand is not there, and also now the supply has also been lessened to that point. So the only person who actually gets to be affected within this equation are the Matatu owners. And so what are they calling on the government to actually do when most of them are making losses of upwards of 40%. Let's look at how they are managing this morning. For 10 seater matatus will carry a maximum of eight passengers, 25 seater vehicles a maximum of 15 passengers, 30 seater vehicles and above to maintain a 60% maximum of seating capacity. These were the directives to the public transport sector by the Health Cabinet Secretary Mtahi Kagwe in the fight against COVID-19 in the country. A few days after the directive was issued, public service operators are now calling on government intervention saying that it is not feasible. Tungeomba, hii serikari tafadhali kama inajali mwananchi, tunajua enyewe kuna hiyo shida ya corona na si ilikuja kama watu wajajipanga. Gava yenyewe irudi chini ipange. Kama ni mafuta, wajaribu kupunguza hii mafuta ndiyo at least hizi gari ziweze kusustain kwa barabara. Tungeomba serikali ifanya kama ni subsidy ya mafuta, ituzie mafuta rais kidogo. The solution can only come through reducing the fuel prices because he, if it does not do that we are going to get affected and we may be pushed out of business. The operators say that if they must follow the directive which dictates that they carry a fraction of the usual passengers, then they have to devise ways of making ends meet. They have in turn gone ahead to hike prices, regardless of the government warning business people not to take advantage of the COVID-19 pandemic. Travelers within Nairobi are paying double the price of bus fare, while long-distance traders are paying at least 200 more Kenyan shillings for the usual bus fare. Toka hapa mbaka na kuru, tunanibisha mia sita. Heri ndiyo recover hiyo watu. Vizo viti zingine ndiyo yo. Baransi, baransi. Uwesti kukuja town, tumelipafe ya dambo. Na hiyo ni kitu inatufinyiria sana kwa zile kwa situri kwa tuna, kama ni sala le, ya nyatu kwa tunapata hapa kwa matatu, jioni tukilipo wa, saa hii msala imeenda chini. Nikitoka don home, ndiyo bay imepanda. The double price whatever we pay. Uh, but sai at the moment tukishuka hakuna hakuna shida ya fare sai some operators have however maintained the usual fare with hopes that the government shall intervene in the situation soon wanga inalipa 500 but now tunalipisha 600 only kwa watu sita na gari kubwa watu nane naona sasa kuna ule customer wetu regular customer na wale wengine pia wanatumia prestige kwa hiyo bei tunaona iko juu sana Kuna wale wanalipisha hata mianane, lakini sisi tukaonelea ikue miasita kwa sababu wani customer wetu na kesho tunawaitaji. Gava hili sema tusipunguze fair, tusi hike fair, tuwebeba hile fair ina, 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 ina taikana. Sasa, pesa kupata ya, ya gari, pesa yenyewe kupatikana ya gari na kuwa nishida. Health Cabinet Secretary Kagwe told public service operators to ensure that passengers do not cluster at bus stops and challenge them to wash and fumigate their vehicles after each trip. The CS warned operators to completely adhere to the directives issued less revocation of their operating licenses of their respective operating circles. For Metropole TV, my name is Nancy Marende.
communication is that social distancing has to be observed if at all we are going to win the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. We start for is a copy and paste of what the other economies are actually observing across the world. We've seen there's some communication across UK, Italy is in total lockdown, the USA as well is in partial lockdown. So the question is that really, is that how effective therefore is social distancing in the fight against the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic? And can Kenya as an economy really sustain itself in this if in reality we are going to sort of sustain ourselves, sort of observe, sorry, this social distancing. We spoke to Edward Kosegwe, who's our resident economic analyst here at Business AM, to give us his two cents on exactly how this should really be going on. I think uh, what the government has come up with, especially the social distancing and keeping entertainment joints closed, I think is a measure that is being followed everywhere in the world. And I think this is something that should have been done from day one. I think it has been now noted that anything, for us to be able to control this sickness, the only way is just a total shutdown. Anything that does not come close to this, uh, uh, close to this uh, total shutdown, then it means disasters. I mean, this has been experienced everywhere across the world. And I think uh, if we can follow suit, then we shall be able to do it. I think uh, this is not a time for us to uh, have business uh, business sense or have economics. It's all about the safety of a multitude of Kenyans. And this should be followed and adhered to. Obviously, it's going to have its repercussions, especially given the fact that 80% of the, of the population lives almost below the poverty line in our country. Uh, but I think these measures are tough and and for the sake of the country, then total lockdowns should should be should be a suit that should be followed. Um, anything apart from this uh, uh, should be reviewed. Uh, but we we know uh, uh, from where we sit that it's very difficult for a complete shutdown like what we are seeing in Western Europe. But at least there should be measures to safeguard the lives of Kenyans and other people affected all over this country. Now you can actually see exactly what Edward Kosebo is talking about. He's saying, well. If you're actually going to stop it, because we do know exactly the way it's spread, then you got to talk about total lockdowns. Got to talk about how social distancing is going to be achieved. Now, and it's also speaking about exactly how we should be thinking about coming up with ways, therefore, to safeguard the lives of the citizens of this country, which also now leads this to what other counties therefore are doing to actually safeguard the lives of its citizens. Now we do know that raft of measures that have been introduced within Nabobi County, which has been now put under new administration as we do know of it, especially the health, transport and then the social security docket. Now what is Nairobi County by itself doing therefore at this time to make sure that Nairobi citizens are well protected, that your lives within this COVID-19 pandemic are actually well taken care of. As it stands, we do expect more announcements. The first one that I have made touches on the morgues in the country. Let's take a look at that. We have been going to various places, schools, churches, uh, large institutions where we can get a uh, uh, high number of people whom we can train. Disinfection and the contamination of main streets of Nairobi CBD, Mudurwa Market, Gikomba Market, and uh, City Market. Disinfection and decontamination of main streets, bus stops, major bus stops like Kencom, Ambassador, GPO, Koja, P Room, and uh, disinfection and decontamination of public transport vehicles. We have been uh, a major supporter in this, in, in the bus stops, mostly in the CBD, the mortuary. We are waiving all the fees for the next seven days. So if, if they pick their, their loved ones in any of our mortuaries, this includes the city mortuary and even our hospital mortuaries, which, which are owned by the county, there will be no fees. Even if there are any penalties, every, just come and collect your body. So they are given up to 31st, that is seven days from today, 31st March, by end of day, close of business, they'll pick their bodies without any questions being asked. At city mortuaries, we have some bodies which have court cases, those will be preserved. But those bodies which have no claimants, there'll be a legal way of disposing them. 
fantastic, therefore, isn't it, that we're talking about how Nabubi County in itself is going to start disinfecting streets and making sure that the vehicles are fumigated and all that. That's good, though. But as a county, and we do know that Nabubi County is responsible for the lives of over 4 million citizens, is that the economy also is now getting affected. We're not only just talking about Nabubi County, we're talking about the entire country at this point. Now, last week, we did see the Central Bank of Kenya Governor, Dr. Patrick Njeroge, come up with a raft of measures that were going to safeguard or sort of cushion the businesses within this economy. I'll just take a moment to remind you is that if you feel that your personal loans that you actually took active as of March 2020 are going to be affected in terms of repayments, you can actually go to your bank and come up with sort of a monetarium with your bank to extend that repayment period for one year same thing to businesses if you feel that well you foresee challenges in terms of your repayments you can also actually get that sorted out through a monetarium with your bank but 23rd was the day when mpc do their monthly their bi-monthly sittings and all the eyes were on them on exactly how they were getting ready therefore to cushion the economy further from the effects of the covid 19 pandemic as it stands out yes they did because now the cbr has been reduced by one point to 7.25 percent with another raft of measures that have been taken therefore to cushion the economy from the effects of the covid 19 pandemic let's get there talk about that that's when we come back and see exactly what our analysts here think about this question being, is this enough or it is the best that we can do? Yesterday, the Monetary Policy Committee lowered the benchmark lending rate by one percentage point from 8.25% to 7.25% with a view to lowering the interest rate on loans, particularly at this time when the country is battling the COVID-19 virus. Today in his briefing, the central bank governor, Patrick Njoroge, announced that the country is seeking 159 billion Kenya shillings to curb the effects of the coronavirus. Njoroge says that although the request for the emergency support of the money is yet to be granted, the government remains optimistic that the money will be granted at the beginning of next month. Those facilities are coming. I think uh, we'll be having, in the context of the announcements of uh, the uh, the, the fiscal measures, which will happen very shortly, uh, in, the, in a matter of days. The central bank has further lowered gross domestic product growth to 3.4%, following the impact of COVID-19 that is slowing down the economy. Expect some new flows in the very near term. And these are related to the crisis. And this relates to the, uh, let's say, IFIs, um, International Financial Institutions, so, for instance, we are expecting emergency. We've, re we've already made a request um, to the World Bank on emergency support related to the coronavirus that will be directed to, or to, to the Ministry of Health, the various operations that they are doing, the Ministry of Health. There is, the request has already been sent in, and therefore we expect something in the order of 50 million U.S. Uh, US dollars um, in the very near term. Governor Njorogis says that much as measures have been put in place, like lowering the lending rate, borrowers may have to wait a little longer before they begin to feel the impact. Banks are liquid. Um, there's ample liquidity, uh, overall liquidity. But you could end up getting pockets of uh, tightness or specific institutions or specific areas. And so that's why we need to be sure we need to ensure that uh, it doesn't become a liquidity problem, either generally, but more specifically in uh, specific points. On the total lockdown of the country, Njoroge says the Central Bank of Kenya has discussed with banks to ensure they put in place measures to ensure they can deal with a glaring crisis. And the issue there would be if people, uh, let's say, let go, so job losses lead to obviously problems in their repayments, and uh, also it leads to significant anxiety and stress. So the idea is to ensure that it doesn't get to that point. So the MPC, the MPC's decision, or the decision that the MPC took, have to be seen against the backdrop of decisions taken last week.
The central bank governor just last week issued a raft of measures to be followed by banks in the fight against COVID-19, including pushing for digital transactions. Now the CBK governor says, good, we do acknowledge that in reality, therefore, that we have to talk about liquidity issues that are going to be followed by the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on the economy. He acknowledges that, yes, the banks are pretty much liquid. But what we do know now also is that it's in the market for some of the money from IMF, for the World Bank and other partners that we do know, some are into the tunes of um, 5.3 billion shillings that is just going to be given back to the banks and we have apps at this morning telling us that they've actually received some of that money that is going to be used to lend therefore to the economy also at cheaper interest rates because we do not have the cbr has been reduced to 7.25 percent good so why are they doing this you ask yourself the question and is this enough we spoke to abraham Udago, the ceo of Mirati capital to have his two cents on this and this is exactly what he thinks you see, reduce the um, CBR from um, 8.25 to 7.25 by one percentage point. Then they reduce the cash ratio from uh, 5.5 to 4.5 percent. Now the effect of that is one, it is showing the direction that uh, banks should lend at a lower rate. That's number one. Number two, the, for the cash ratio, by lowering the cash ratio, it means it reduces the amount of cash that the, that the banks have to hold with central bank. So that releases about 30, 30, 30 or so B into the economy. But the big question is, if, when that money is released into the economy, or released to the banks, are they really obligated to lend? Do they really want to lend in this environment? The answer is no. And will they lend? Most probably not. And is there anything the central bank can do? I don't think so. So the, the net effect is that most probably that money will find its way back through treasury, to, to, to an investment in treasury bills. Because right now, with what is going on, with the, with the uncertainty, I would, I, would, I would want to see the bank that would want to lend to the SME. If they couldn't lend them in good times, I, I, I wonder why they would want to lend them now, in the kind of circumstance that we're in. Right now, Abraham tends to think that, well, regardless of what the Central Bank of Kenya Governor, Dr. Patrick Njoroge, has done, that the banks are not obligated, therefore, to actually lend. Because despite of what you do around this issue, that you cannot obligate the banks, therefore, to lend to the mass market. And that's exactly what is done by reducing the CBR to 7.25%. So the question being is that uh, could have they done more? So we spoke to Mbida Mwema, our market analyst here, and this is exactly what she thinks about what the CBK has done. The move by the Central Bank of Kenya is certainly welcome. It doesn't begin to scratch the surface, however. If you consider about 35 billion released to, to be able to mitigate the COVID risk cutting across the SMEs, and if you also consider about 7.4 million SMEs are there, then this only translates to 4,730 worth of possible relief that would be applicable to all these SMEs. If you look at it in that context, we need a lot more. Now, given the fact that the CPK is possibly not in a place where it has the luxury of extensive liquidity, similar to the developed countries, they are trying to do their best. But at some point, we might need a much bigger bailout, whether from our local treasuries or from our development partners. But more might still need to be done to mitigate the impact. That's it. I mean, it's not enough. And they're saying that, well, if they wanted to do more, therefore, that they could have signaled it further by coming up with proper incentives for the MSMEs within the economy. Abraham Dogo thinks that, yes, you're reducing the CBR, but at the end of the day, therefore, the banks are not obligated again to lend to the mass market at this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. The just to get a closer feel, therefore, of exactly why they did this, we spoke to Job Kiag, is an economist with the Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, just to paint a picture of why, therefore, it was necessary for the CBK and the MPC to go this direction. adverse economic outlook 
the Monetary Policy Committee sat on 23rd and uh, they came up with actually two or three uh, ways in order to negate the financial and economic crisis maybe that might be impending in the near future. Number one, they know what the central bank rate from 8.25 to 7.25. Number two, they reduce the reserve ratios, that is the cash reserve ratios, from 5.25 to 4.25. And number three, they released some 35.2 billion uh, additional liquidity to uh, uh, directly to commercial banks to support the, the distressed kind of uh, uh, financial houses, uh, the commercial banks. Uh, what we are looking at, uh, the central bank is trying to increase the money supply in the economy. And uh, as a result, uh, we are trying to see that they are trying to cushion the, the, the consumers to continue with their normal consumption. For instance, we are looking at uh, some of the financial institutions which are having, uh, having uh, some challenges. For instance, we are looking at uh, the non-performing assets, the non-performing loans. Uh, on, in the recent, it has raised, it has raised from uh, 12.0 in December last year to now uh, 12.7, which, which is always, in, which is increasing. Now, when the central bank, through the Monetary Policy Committee, sat down and uh, realized the fact that in order to negate this crisis is to increase the money supply in the economy. And this kind of policies that they came up with, only thing that we are looking at, they are trying to increase this money supply in the economy in order for, in order for, uh, in order to cushion, in order to cushion, uh, the consumer and whenever we are talking about the consumer we are talking about the households and the farms pretty much that's job Kiagabuli trying to paint a picture of why regardless of the fact that some analysts think that it's not just enough but he says that they had to do that in light of uh, this COVID-19 pandemic now we do have also our analyst Edward Kusara who also thinks that yes you have to do that and so the question is, is, are they welcome at this time or not? That's actually the question that we put to him, and this is exactly what he had to say. The question on, on interest rates, uh, we, must be able, we must understand that interest rates, where, where, where the central bank or the monetary policy committee wants to bring down interest rates is for businesses to be able to borrow. And I think this is a time when, if you are to assess globally the situation, even in our region, most businesses are closing. I mean, there's very little economic activity that is happening in this part of the country. So for you to be able to lower the interest rates, then it means that you are lowering those interest rates for businesses to be able to go and borrow um, cheaper loans and for them to be able to, to operate. As it is, businesses are not operating. What is happening globally, and if we can be able to borrow from what is happening in progressive economies and in frontier markets, is that there are stimulus packages. Uh, and these stimulus packages are in the form of social transfers, cash transfers, social security, where governments and, 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 and progressive governments are actually giving um, uh, citizens of their countries cash transfer and cushioning them against all forms of risk, whether these risks are in the form of food risk or whatever it is, rental risk and so on and so forth. A case in example is Ireland, where they've decided to give everybody who's been retrenched uh, about uh, 200 uh, euros a week. I mean, these are the kind of measures and this is the kind of stimulus packages that progressive societies are experiencing. Uh, lowering interest rates really doesn't help business because business is not in operation. If you look at both supply side and demand side factors, all of these factors put together, nothing is happening, nothing, there's no economic activity. And so therefore you should be able to understand that for us to be able to reduce interest rates, it means that you're telling businesses to go and borrow from those banks and start buying commodities. Where are they buying commodities from? So I think this is not the right decision. This is not the right time for us to start thinking about interest rates. This is a public health risk. If there's anything, there should be more expenditure on health, on masks and other resources that should be able to help the economy move forward. I think also the government should be able to start thinking outside the box. How are they going to mitigate and help their citizens in a time of when there's food crisis? Are they 
they going to give cash transfers? Are they going to up up their game on social security? These are some of the areas that third world countries cannot be able to handle. And I think it's going to be a crisis. For the MP MPC to be able to reduce interest, I don't see how that is going to help businesses. Businesses are on a lockdown. So how does that help our country move forward? How does that help our country to move forward? Because that's the only question that Edward Kosaba right there is asking that, yes, regardless of the fact that you have reduced interest rates, and we do know, yes, that they have been reduced. But that hasn't really done so much in the economy. Because, yes, we're talking about reducing them from 8.25% to 7.25%. It's saying that this does not really mean, therefore, that the businesses within the economy are going to be helped. Because in reality, the question is asking is this. So what? If the economy is in a partial lockdown, if, they co if nothing is moving, if other businesses are making losses, if supplies are not actually coming in, then why would you reduce interest rates on the facilities within the economy? How is that going to really help the economy? So we really, therefore, did put in two questions to tell us, so if it's not interest rates, then what? And this is exactly what he had to say. It is true that uh, the shilling has lost against uh, major hard currencies. And this basically uh, simple principle of economics, which is demand and supply. I think uh, if we are to follow those principles, then yeah, this should be able to advise you that most investors, both institutional investors, high net worth individuals are all holding dollars. No one wants to sell their dollars. It's very wrong also for the central bank to start mopping up dollars at a time like this because then you never know how people are going to use this money. So I think um, uh, central bank buying uh, at 109, uh, probably the same investors, speculators, insurance company, financial institutions, selling off some of these dollars to be able to be profitable at a time like this when retail, when, when, when the margins, when, when banks' margins are extremely low. So I think uh, people who are selling, obviously, at those institutions that are hard, that, pro that have a profit warning and so they want to make a profit and sustain the operations by selling off some of the assets that they have and I think for individuals who have dollars most of them have decided not to sell and that's why the price keeps on increasing and going up and I think we are yet to see the price of the dollar still go up uh, so long as people keep on hoarding and there are those speculators who are waiting to make a kill out of this business waiting for the price to see what whether it will rally upwards and once it rallies upwards and that's the time to start um, that's the time they start selling off some of these assets and i think the greenback will still go up against the currency our shilling uh, if you look at the balance of payments and um, you'll realize that we are not exporting even horticultural uh, products so definitely uh, our, our terms and our balance of payments is definitely affected so it's a wait and see approach but obviously the dollar is the shilling is still going to lose further and this is something that is anticipated not just within our country but is a global financial crisis uh, worse than what happened in 08 so we are we are waiting to see what happens so now there's that prediction that well we might be headed that direction therefore because if interest rates are not going to help then the shilling will continue performing weaker against the green bark is saying well Another counter-interactive move is that the central bank at this time when it's trying to reduce interest rates and also try and spy economic, economic activity at this time, they're also trying to mop up the dollar from the economy. So BK Governor, Dr. Parkin Jorga did say that yes, they are aware of what is happening here and this is their first move. In his own words, he said, I don't want to use all my ammunition at once. There are more. So we're waiting to see exactly what he's going to do in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. Even as this goes on, the conversation is, how do you, as an individual, help to stop the curb of the COVID-19 pandemic? We take a short break. Once we come back, our sector trends this morning from a special report out of the COVID-19 pandemic.